Hi, everyone. This is Joshua Hoffman and Alex Garashenko, and welcome to another episode of the Masters in Marketing Agency podcast, where we deconstruct the why and how agency owners found their success, and in season two, discuss the future of marketing. Today, I have Zev Wexler, the CEO of Wexler Marketing, a full-service digital marketing agency helping organizations grow by leveraging the power of marketing automation and combining cutting-edge technology with a personal touch. And we requested Zev join us as a guest to learn how his deep knowledge in blockchain, Web3, and AI is guiding his vision of tomorrow's marketing agency and what he is doing today to get there. Welcome, Zev. Thank you so much, Joshua, Alex. This is a great honor. Love chatting with you guys, and thank you for having me. Oh, that was great. Thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, so I wanted to start off with something a little bit more unique um, to our podcast, because I think you're the first agency... I think that we that we've spoken with uh, that accepts crypto for payment, and I know we'll jump into a lot of these categories. So, um, why do you accept it, and, and where do you see the future of marketing going in terms of blockchain? Wow, so that that's a good, great question. So, first of all, if we're talking about just why we're accepting uh, crypto, is we do a lot of business that has to do with Web three and with blockchain, and why would we not? Second, uh, and I want everybody to check me on this. Don't trust my data on this. If you accept crypto, on average, your sales go up by about, I believe, 21%. So wouldn't you want to grow your business revenue-wise 21%? I would. Um, so accepting um, crypto makes a lot of sense to me. Now, we're selective. Uh, I won't accept any crypto for any project. Um I just had a really big project where we had some sweat equity included with it. And I told the CEO, we'll accept crypto later at the moment because of the sweat equity. We need some cash. But crypto makes sense. And it's also, we may dive into it kind of as we talk, but there are periods where it makes more sense to accept crypto. There are periods that maybe not. And something that I always think about and every business person should is when you accept crypto, you have to keep it as crypto unless you want to create another uh, taxable action. So th there's a lot of things to, to kind of dive through. But if you ask me why, is two reasons. One is I work in this industry, so I, I need to show them that I know what I'm talking about. And two, it grows my sales. Where, where do you think people get it wrong? If they're trying to, you know, maybe they don't have the background that you do um, and they're like, you know, let's let's try this crypto thing, whether it's a project or accepting payment. Where, where do you think people get it wrong? So, um, you know, we live in a world where everything is about what's fashionable and what's not, what words are, you know, in and what words are out. So crypto is has a bad name. And um, I want to distinguish something to everybody here. Crypto and blockchain are not the same thing. Blockchain is a superior technology that's going to take over the world, and I will sign everything for it. Crypto is something that is built in into the system to give tokenization and value to something. Okay, so in the crypto field, fraud has been um, huge, unfortunately, but it's not the problem of blockchain. It's the problem of fraudulent people. Okay, so the biggest misconception I would like to correct here. There is nothing fraudulent about crypto. Crypto is a part of blockchain, which is a superior technology and going to take over everything. So I think when people look at crypto, they think, oh, I don't want to get, you know, with fraudulent things. I don't want to get with all kinds of things that the media says, you know, um, laundering money, all kinds of things that really, if you understand the blockchain, has nothing to do with the blockchain, but has to do with some people that tainted crypto wrong. Does that make sense, Joshua? Yeah. Um, and, and I guess, you know, throwing a lot of these words around, I want to actually keep going more broad. Um, and I know last time we spoke, and I think this will preface a lot of what we're going to get into, because um, of course I wanted to dive into you accepting payments of, of crypto, but I want to go back a step now. And again, I know that last time we spoke, you did a very good job of kind of explaining what Web 2, Web 2, Web 1, 2, and 3 kind of look like and, and how that impacted marketing agencies. Um, so when you do get to web three, feel free to kind of go in any direction that you want to there, but can you actually go back to web one? What did that look like for marketing agencies? Web two, what did that look like? And, and then go on. That's, that's great. So I saw the world. I am kind of in between. I'm not too old, not too young. So I got to experience some stuff. Now, when I was just growing into the business, the internet was blowing onto the scene. Okay. Now, something I always, um, I tell my dad, dad. 
you do not understand the internet at all. You don't have any understanding of the lying technology, yet you use it every day. So you don't have to understand the technology in order for it to take over your world, which I think most people don't really understand and realize. So the, the internet was there from kind of the 80s, but we only saw the internet blow up when we had the applications mm -hmm. and then everything was changed. If you think about the internet, take our world, everything in our world from culture to business to money, it's all a derivative of the internet. Now, at that point, I don't think I was sophisticated enough, smart enough, or mature enough to take, you know, to take advantage of this major shift. But then came the smartphone. So the smartphone, I was already a man. I was a businessman. I already was in the, in the, you know, in the business. So I saw that revolutionize everything. Can you guys name right now the five biggest companies in the world? Are we doing this? Uh, yeah, let's, let's try it. Apple, Google, is it is it Fang? Is Fang the top four? Not even, maybe not. Yeah, pretty much. So I'm not even, I don't even care about the actual ranking, but all of them are internet smartphone company. Sure, yep. It used to be Walmart and Coca-Cola and Sears and all kinds of companies that don't we don't even think about anymore as giants. So everything that controls our economy is a baby. Like Microsoft in, in the, the grand scheme of things is a baby. Google is like it's 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 crazy like everything is brand new so when i saw that i was like okay so this revolutionized everything how we do business how we interact with each other with no connection whether we understand the technology or not and then i started looking at it adopting of technologies how we as humans adapt to technology so internet was the fastest technology we've ever adapted to at that time smartphone was way faster blockchain is faster ai is faster so we're adopting these technologies. And Wayne Gretzky, it was a great hockey player, said once, I don't want to be where the puck is. I want to be where it's going to be. And that has always been my business focus. So I want to know what's going to happen. And I want to be there. So internet, smartphone, now blockchain is the next one. So I don't think people understand the level of impact blockchain is going to have. The same way that internet changed multiple industries. Like, do you guys remember what we did before the internet? Manual, writing things down, calling? <laughs> Sending mails? Like, do you guys remember that stuff? It seems like a different world. Blockchain is going to do that. And it's going to do that in ways that people don't really realize. People think that blockchain is crypto. And like I told you, that is the biggest, biggest difference. So let's talk about what is blockchain, okay? So blockchain is a superior technology to what we have now in, it, in the internet. And it's superior in the way that it's completely private, okay? I'm gonna say something here that I don't think almost anybody in the world knows. The Bitcoin computing system is the strongest computing system in the world. There's more computing power in the Bitcoin system than anything else, okay? Like the amount of computing power in that system is just amazing. OK, so the reason I'm sharing this with you is these systems are almost to the point that they're invincible. They're almost getting to the point that there's the point of no return. So what blockchain does is it secures, it protects and it negates all kinds of third parties. So there is a lot of third parties in the world and in everything that we do. And we spend about 10 trillion dollars a year on third party things. I'll give you an example. like. Um, DMV, titling agencies, banks, you know, all these things that I'm trying to do a transaction with you, Josh, but I need to use the bank or the titling company or the DMV or blockchain solves all of that, which is, it's going to be so amazing when it's actually in fruition, but you won't need any third parties. If I want to give you my car or sell you my car, I can do, just do that in the blockchain. The smart contract will take care of everything and everybody's going to be aware. So it is so much savings. It will clear up so much energy to actually create, to, to do good things. What is all these third party companies? No offense, but you're not creating anything. You're not bringing any value. You're just basically, you know, documenting some deal and making money in the process. With this technology, it's not necessary. I hope I'm not hurting the feelings of anybody that does third party, but that's basically what blockchain is going to do. And it's going to do it in everything. I, you know, people think about the finance industry, which is going to be a big thing, but it's going to do it in every single industry. And there's never been a company I got into that blockchain could not either improve, make more money or save money.
So when you say it's going to change third parties, I'm assuming so there's still going to need to be some source that manages the smart contract, right? I mean, that's the beauty of smart contract, my friend. So if you build a smart contract, Bitcoin is not run by anybody right now. There is no head of Bitcoin. There is no head of the system. There is no, it's a, it's a system that's run by a smart contract. So if you design the contract correctly, Alex, you don't have to. I think okay. there lies the problem potentially is you, let's say you and Josh want to do a deal. Do you both have the foresight to plan all of the potential things in that contract? I think in that it's going to these third, third parties, it's going to be a shift to different third parties that are a lot more optimized potentially that it will produce these smart, long living, you know, the smart contracts to then act on their behalf without the need for them doing all these things. But so I these things are, think are, there will be existence. someone helping to that knows how to construct the smart contract. So let me, these things are working and I've actually, I'm developing them. So there is not going to be no need of a person managing it. When I sell you a car, there is only 10 scenarios that are possible, Alex. There is not a world. So inside that smart contract, I can put all those scenarios. And based on the sh decisions, you and the person that is buying can both decide exactly what is the contract and the contracts on. And the third party does not exist because everything is recorded on the blockchain. So the blockchain is technology that allows you in the blockchain. I'm a bank and you're a bank, Alex. There's zero need for a bank. There is zero need for me to work hard for my money, give it to a third party, let them do whatever they want with it, and then hope they give it back to me when I need it. There is no need in that in blockchain. I'm a bank. If I want to send you money right now, all I need is your address and the money will be there in three seconds without any third party authorization or anything else. Same will happen with your house. Same will happen with your car. Uh, we're talk let's talk about uh, something I just spoke about in, in another podcast. There is an issue with diplomas. Schools or people are faking diplomas. I can put something on the wall here that says I have a Yale diploma. Most people will not check and I'll get that. But if it was on the blockchain, I could never fake it. The blockchain checks Yale, checks me, checks all the verifications and makes sure that I have that. Does that make sense? Rolex was working very much with us right now about making sure that every product they do has an NFT that the person knows that that is the original Rolex without any third party, without any, that is verification that Rolex created this watch for him. And that is a unique Rolex. Does that make sense? So if you break it down to every small thing, whether it's insurance agent, bank, car, house, writing the smart contract to cover all of that is not the problem at all, because those actions are pretty straightforward. There is not a thousand ways to buy a car. There is not a thousand ways to send money. It is very, very, very straightforward. So most smart contract, Alex, at, at least in our humble opinion, can solve 99% of the third party involvement. Yeah, and I just want to highlight, uh, you know, you're obviously not just talking out of your butt. Uh, you, you've been there and you've done it, not just with the company that you have now, but, you know, you worked a very Web2 company with Link Boost, and, and you're in a very Web3 company right now with Viacry. So, um, you know, whether you've kind of been touching those a little bit here but or previous on that previous answer, can you just tell us a little bit more about each of those? Sure. So I think you asked me before, and I think it's a good time to kind of come come to it. So what internet, right? We started with the internet, Alex and, and uh, Joshua, when we started with the internet, the internet was static read only, okay? It was just like putting a, you know, a sticker somewhere. There was no way for us, the, the marketers, to change or to do. We just put a, basically a business card out there. Here, look, this, this is what you got to read, okay? So that was the first iteration of the internet. The second iteration of the internet, which Web2 people call it, it's... Um, it was not just reading, but writing as well. And of course, the biggest component of that was social media. Now you can actually respond. Now, Web 2 also did something that most people don't quite realize, but Web 2 made us the product. Mm -hmm. So on Web 2, Joshua, Alex, and myself, we are the product. That's why Facebook is free. That's why LinkedIn is free, because we are the product. Our data is being manipulated and sold 24-7 to the highest bidder based on these companies that control the internet. So on Web 2, we are products. Web 3, okay, is 
in a way, the democratization of the web. And it's because blockchain is going to negate third parties. It's the same idea on the internet. So when you put blockchain and then put the internet on top of it, now you have a completely different beast. And what do I mean by that? Now you can actually be a part owner of the networks you want to do things with. So you want to, I'm just going to name some uh, blockchains right now. Like you want to work on Polygon, then you can invest in Polygon. And now you're a part owner of Polygon. You can vote on what the, the network does or doesn't do. You are now a part owner, which is absolutely impossible in Web2. Um, they don't want you as an owner. You're just a product. So if you want to work with Cardano, you can now be part of part owner of the system. Ethereum, any other thing that you have there, now you are part of the governance. You're part of the leadership. You're part of the control. And the more you believe in a product, the more you can invest in it. And if that product explodes, it's going to make you rich because the value of what you have in the network is going to go 10x. Does that make sense? So basically, you own part of the web, and then you can actually, if that, uh, if it grows the way that I think a lot of them will, it's going to actually make you a lot of money. Yeah, and, and you mentioned a few examples of web th- where w- web two things will become web three, so you can verify it and things like that. Um, but do you have anything specific in the web three space or use cases that you see happening to marketing agencies in, in the next few years? Absolutely. So, uh, so basically. We need to understand that advertising on Web3 is completely different than advertising on Web2, okay? Like completely different. It's going to be a whole new era. We also need to understand that SEO is different on Web3 than Web2. The biggest thing, and that's why a lot of companies come to Viacry, is companies right now in Web2 have a crisis, like a huge crisis of engagement. Okay, we're in limbo. People are still spending a lot of money on TV that doesn't go anywhere. They don't have a way to really connect. Web3 allows you a direct connection with your client. So this is going to change everything. And marketers are going to need to relearn a lot of things. That's why we're really diving into it, because I don't want to be learning it when I have to. I want to be learning it before everybody else does. So um, with this technology going on the Internet, everything is going to change. The way we do advertising, engagement, SEO, every single thing is going to change. If if people that um, here want to look at a company that um, I'm actually invested in and we do some work with that, do amazing work, look at values.co. Values.co is a Web3 loyalty and advertising company that does incredible things uh, in the industry. They have a case study that they partnered up with... Um, board company called i think board star and through this campaign the board star clients cleaned 770,000 pounds of plastic from the ocean and by that created this huge link and engagement with the company so things like this things you know people are now looking for a cause with web3 you can connect people together you can connect causes together this will create communities this will create movements in a way that is has never even been closely possible on Web2. So we're going to create some tribes here on on Web3. And companies need to understand how to engage and create, and it's going to be different than Web2. Joshua, I hope that answered your question. What I especially liked about it is that we keep using the word community um, and tribes because I think that is the big difference. It's it's not just individuals now, kind of like you said, writing on social media and things like that. I think it's a little bit different, and it gets more of that community uh, aspect to it. So I'm glad, I'm glad you kind of brought that to it. Um, you mentioned Viacry again, so I just want to give you a little bit of time to kind of explain a little bit more about that company and any maybe projects that you have over there. Great. Um, I will share some, some of them under contract still, but, um, but basically as I told you, I run Wexar marketing. We do great work. I see that everything is changing blockchain, uh, web three. So Viacry was built to kind of be a bridge between web two and web three. So with Wexler Marketing, I built a lot of relationships. I help a lot of people on the Web2 side. I got that trust. We have lots of clients. All these clients are going to need to go to Web3. Again, it's not a voluntary thing. You either do it or then you'll have to do it. So if they all have to do it, what we decided to do is basically build that bridge for them. So in Viacry, we go to a company and basically we do a full audit of how blockchain, Web3, and AI where they fit, well, they'll save you money, where they're where they're gonna 
negate risk? Where are they going to make you money? And basically, we built a program for these companies on how to basically get on this wave before they must, and it's going to cost them a lot of money. Uh, it's fun. We actually do the strategy. Then we actually build the Web3 um, blockchain. Um, we build the actual tech stacks. We actually put this together. We um, you know, go hand in hand with our clients. If you guys look at our website, viacry.com, you'll see some super cool clients, um, some super cool logos. We do some fun, fun work. And you know, digital marketing agencies, and we're all in this business, unfortunately, is being commoditized, right? There's a lot of us out there. Um, there's a lot of us competing out there. There's not a lot of us competing on what I'm doing on Viacry. So, yeah. you know, Wexler Marketing, in all honesty, is a bigger company than Viacry, and we generate more revenue than where, but I don't think it's going to continue for much longer. Meaning, I think that opportunity, everybody's going to need to use it, and nobody knows what to do. Where Web 2, there's a lot of people that know what to do. There's a lot of people that don't, but there's also there's a lot of people out there that can give you great service. I'll do some of the the boasting for you, and I, you might not want to, but some of those logos on the website, Ferrari, Doubletree, BMW, Legoland, Star Wars, Red Bull. Um, I'm debating if I should stop there. I keep going with these big names. Nickelodeon, uh, yeah, Man and Man. No, so, uh, I appreciate you, brother. Um, <laughs> it's you know, it's it's nice to put those big names out there. And of amazing. course, everybody wants to work with a Ferrari, and I'm still trying Never. to convince them to pay me in Ferraris. Naturally. But, um, I'll, I'll let you know how it goes. Um, <laughs> but um, it's not about that. It's about... Get, I'm learning something that is so valuable and so few people know it. And I have a partner who is 10 times smarter than I am. Mm -hmm. I'm more of the mouthpiece and the connections. He's mm -hmm. actually the, the mastermind. And I'm going to tell you guys a story, if you guys don't mind, mm -hmm. about a meeting I had. So my, my uh, partner and I, in the last CES, okay, we have a meeting. My partner was asked to meet a uh, private space station, Okay. Super cool, right? Private space station. Uh, the, the private space business is booming. So we are supposed to meet this lady that really wants to hear about some solutions for her, for the blockchain. The lady couldn't come or something happened. So we ended up meeting with two spaceship engineers that did not want to talk to us, Joshua and Alex. Like they were there. You know, those meetings were like, when is it going to be over? I, I, I you know, I got to stay here for half an hour, then I'm leaving. So they did not understand what crypto guys want from them. So again, that misconception, we're not crypto guys, we're blockchain technology guys. So we started talking to them and they did not want to talk to us. And we're digging, we're digging. And then we understood something miraculous. These guys do all this stuff on space. Uh, all these sensors pick up all this information. They have to bring the information back to Earth somehow, right? So they they use uh, you know Google Cloud or AWS. Do you guys have any idea the cost of data? That they're paying insane i think yearly it's well, over half a million dollars okay if we transfer that to the blockchain we will cheapen that by uh basically they'll get a 98 percent discount okay so now when they heard that everything changed mm. suddenly we were smart important they invited us in we are now like because we can save them extreme amounts of money so they did not even foresee that at all, but it's there. And there's so many things that people don't see. For instance, Walmart is investing a lot in blockchain right now. Why? Because they want to know exactly at what point mm -hmm. something drops. So if the fruit was good coming that from this warehouse, it was good in this truck, but it wasn't good at this store, then something happened there. And that you cannot do that without blockchain. So blockchain allows you so many data points and so many ways to verify that. And the smart contract, Alex, not an actual team or people sends you that information. Something happened here. So it basically allows us to do so much more with so much less. How do you uh how do you keep your sanity with running so many companies? Um kids, they, they don't <laughs> yeah my, my my children don't don't give a damn about the companies I run. So they keep me super super sane. I would always ask the same question. How do you keep your sanity with so many companies and kids? But I guess maybe maybe they balance each other out, as I think is what you're saying. They, so I love to run, okay? I feel like if I'm not running, I'm dying. So that's my kind of belief in life. I'm like a flower. I either bloom or I go down. So I'm really trying to bloom, man. And I know it's going to end sometime, but I know if I don't push it, it's going to end. So I'm just trying to do as much as I can. And um, 
Webster Marketing is amazing and my clients there are amazing and um, seeing how much we help clients and, you know, seeing the gratitude that that just that makes me happy. But on the passion of where the puck is going, that's where Viacry is. Um, that's where, you know, we're excited about all these new AI tools and all these new things that we can do now that we couldn't do before. So that excites me. So when I come to the office, I'm standing now, like my guys laugh that I never sit down. I only sit down when I'm exhausted because I, I, I feel like I have to keep on moving. You're uh, you're talking to two hockey guys here, so we appreciate the uh, the hockey references. Uh, and my main reason for, we were talking about this right before, but my main reason for moving to Colorado uh, is I love trail running, uh, and I just wanted to up my level on trail running. So, so you hit two two good ones there. Uh, a few questions I tend to ask at the end: um, If you had to teach something to other marketers, what would it be? Absolutely. Blockchain, Web3, and the implications. Every marketer needs to understand the difference between Web2 and Web3. And I know a lot of marketers, and most of them don't. So you got to understand it because everything is going to change. There's going to be a rug pull coming out for uh, Web2 marketing at some point. If you're not prepared for it, you're going to go. Okay? Like, and, I've, and you see it in small things, but this is going to be huge. You see it like with GA4. I've known a lot of companies that you know, knew how to do analytics before GA4 and now they're lost, okay? So now we get so much more business because we knew GA4 is coming and we were prepared for it and we have experts just for GA4, so it works. This is going to be that times 100 because everything is going to change. So if you're not going to know what to do, you're you're basically going to have a whole brand new business. So if you are in digital marketing, understand how your job is going to differ on Web3 and it will differ in almost every way. And if I'll add a little thing to that, AI is a big changer in all of that. So blockchain and Web3 are the same thing. AI is the thing that makes it all move way faster. So right now with AI, you know, there was this thing, is AI going to replace me? No, but I will replace you if you don't use it. So if I use AI, I now become 10 times more efficient. So if you don't, I'll take your business. And the same thing here on the AI, you can actually use the AI to understand what you need to do with Web3. So if I have one um, or two, I guess, um, things that every marketer should do, play with AI and understand how that affects Web3. Understand how you can shorten processes. Everything we do in our agency has AI involved in it. Okay, it doesn't mean AI does everything and it doesn't mean we let AI do QC, but it means that there are ways to shorten processes. In web to work right now, projects take me right now probably 25% of the time that it took me two years ago. Are, are you open to helping other marketing agencies with that shift or is it more of a thing that's saying like, you know, I want to jump ahead, so I don't know. Yeah. I win, win. And I don't see marketing companies as competition. I just had a great conversation conversation with a good friend of mine. He owns an amazing agency. Shout out to a fear and furlough. Um, and we are supposed to be competitors. Mm -hmm. we every other day we consult share business if he does anything better than i do then he'll help them if i do then so it's not a competition so any agency that wants help feel free to reach out to me linkedin is probably the best way and we love to help we need to move this industry up we're not trying to keep people down and us move up in the end if the all in, if all the industry moves up we're just going to get better and I'll give service to my clients, so I'll keep them. I'll continue learning, so I'll keep them. So I'm not afraid of losing them. But if I am joined by two minds like Joshua and Alex, I'll be better. Yeah, I, I honestly think that's very special to the marketing agency space. Um, you know, I, I came from a lot of the Amazon space, and I was shocked how even though, you know, they're all competitors, they help each other out. They're all LinkedIn. They're all liking each other's posts. So it's it's a pretty amazing thing to see in that industry. Um, are you guys looking to hire any positions right now? Yes. Yes, we are. Um, we are looking for uh, front and back end developers, uh, both on Web 2 and Web 3. Uh, we're looking for some uh, designers like brand and website designers. We're looking for some social media people. I just hired an assistant and I hope it's going to last for a long time because that was hard to find. Um, so, but we are, we're always looking and not just in Wex and marketing, but also in Viacry. So if anybody think that they're, you know, they're talented, they, they want to kind of attack this new world, 
reach out to us. We're growing and we're looking for people. That was that was great. And then last question, any books or podcasts or newsletter recommendations? Wow. Um, I love reading books, like love sure. reading books. Um, I do a lot of audio books because I don't have the time and I drive a lot. So <laughs> let's think. I have a friend that's coming out with a book that really, really helped me personally. Perfect. Um, the book is going to come out on September 12th. I had the, the the treat of getting the manuscript and reading it and seeing, um, and it affected me so much. The name of the book is um, Unconditional Power by an amazing author named Stephen Gaffney. So Unconditional Power, I'll give you guys some uh, some links too. We'll give free chapters if anybody wants, but he talks about something that is so, uh, we understand it, but so profound. He says that, the mood we're in affects how smart we are. And basically, there's three three levels of power. There is powerless, where you're like, yeah, I can't do anything with this. There is conditional power. It's like, yeah, Josh and Alex, I can do this interview, but also only if you do A, B, and C, and I, you'll, you know, you'll, you'll get me a nice microphone. Um, and three is powerful, is like, I don't care about the circumstances. I'm going to make this happen. And through this book, he teaches you and and I fall for it, you know, I'm a hothead, uh, my team knows it. So I fall for this. And sometimes I need to really adjust my mood to really be powerful and not be conditional. And that is, so if, if anybody wants, please reach out. I'll even connect you to the incredible author. His name is Stephen Gaffney, Unconditional Power, something I read and really affected me. And it's coming out September 12th of this year. Perfect. We'll try to match the uh, releasing the episode with that. I think that'd be I think that'd be great. I think the the episode is actually going to be a match. I think so. I think I think it's time we actually on September twelfth. Yeah, yeah, really. I think it is. Yeah, (laughs) funny enough. And as we come up to the end of the episode, I just want to give you an opportunity to mention how people can find you and anything else you'd like to end with. Great. So I love LinkedIn. Okay, I live on LinkedIn. I spend a couple of hours a day on LinkedIn. I love my community. LinkedIn drives us so much business partnerships, uh, employees. So guys, don't follow me, connect with me, send me an intro. I would like to build a relationship with you. So LinkedIn is where I really foster my relationships. And if you're genuine and if you want to help reach out to me, I'll get back to you. Um, If anybody wants to reach out to uh, my companies, wexlermarketing.com is our um, digital marketing agency. Viacry.com is our blockchain company. If anybody's interested in any positions, they can either reach out to me on LinkedIn or connect to our companies. And we'd love to talk to you. And Joshua and Alex, you guys are so awesome. I want to continue talking to you. I don't even understand how all this time has passed, but I, if there's I anything say. I can do for you, I'd love to. No, I, I just got to say thank you so much for coming on the show. Uh, and for those of you who learned something new from this episode, please consider giving us a like or a follow so we can continue getting the greatest or highest quality guests. Uh, and as always, thank you for listening, Zev. Uh, love the topic. Love that you're the easiest guest ever. Um, so thank you for making this a great episode. Thank you, guys. Much appreciated. Thank you, Thanks for listening to the Masters in Marketing Agency podcast. I hope you got a ton of value out of this episode. And before we go, I just want to thank our sponsors, DevNoodle. DevNoodle provides marketing agencies with the ability to offer their clients unlimited website design, build, and management services with fixed monthly plans. If website design, development, and maintenance is holding your agency back from growing, please reach out to us at devnoodle.com, where we make websites easy, easy for you and easy for your clients, devnoodle.com.